Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Beyond the Summit presentation of the Star Letter I League 13 European match between Arcade, Power Rangers, and Team Empire. Here we're going to be going into game one of the best of three series of two uh, amazing CIS teams. I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what these guys bring with slightly tuned rosters as well as new strategies here in 6.85b. Once again, thank you guys for tuning in. I'm myself, M. Blaze, broadcasting on behalf of Beyond the Summit. And I'm joined by none other than Llama Down Under. How's it going? I, it's going really well. I wanted to double check. Are Weapon and Flow showing up as different names? Is that secretly general there? Or is... Because I, I know believe, they had a roster shuffle, but... I believe Flow is Flow. I believe that is a yeah. unique name. But um, Weapon Y is actually Aloha Dance. Don't know why okay. he's changed his official tag. Because you can. Um, yeah, yeah, obviously. So, <laughs> so, so many team players have taken the liberty. Yeah, so okay, it is going to be instead Flo standing in for General. I was hoping to see how General plays. He used to be on, it was either CSI Rejects or somebody else I'd caught a few times casting them, and I was excited to see how the new team was going, but either ways, we got a stand in, and we got some bands and picks flying out. Some teams prioritize Bane so highly. It, it, I know he got buffed a little bit last patch, but he is just hot for some teams. Like, yeah. first round pick. I mean, he the buffs were pretty tremendous. I the worst thing about Bane was his early game mana pool. So just being able to use your brain sap more is it, in general just an, an amazing thing. But uh, he is by far the tankiest sub natural support. Like the bra brain sap uh, heal along with the raw stats that he starts with makes him amazing. And then he's also, of course, great at setting things up. So you can go for uh, some picks that require a little bit of that benefit. Um, but I think the best reason why he's so prevalent is just because of the cores that you're currently facing. There's a lot of heroes that hate to be locked down for an extended period of time, and Fiend's Grip is just one of the best abilities to throw their way. So uh, Bane can play the 5 position and just rub around and be involved with his spell set. He can uh, farm up a Blink Dagger Team and make use of the Fiend's Grip. Like, this hero does bring a lot to the table, and I'm glad to see him back, to be honest. Yeah, it's always really fun and blocks down a lot of heroes. We got a Broodmother ban out as well. I feel like that's always exciting. I don't know. I, I'm not huge into watching the Broodmother games, but other than that, a little bit surprised Nightstalk has actually fallen off quite a bit. I don't know if I've seen a team ban him for a while. It feels like he was very hot early of the patch. Teams kind of figured out how to deal with his vision everywhere. And so a ban out, maybe not what we were expecting, and that gives us Slaughter coming yeah. through the pool. That's really unusual. That's very surprising, to be honest here. Seeing the Slaughter picked up as a third pick, is just unfathomable for a lot of the meta games. I think China and America both run Slaughter as a tier one hero and as a phase one pick. And the fact is, uh, even uh, today, the other matches we've seen, he's been usually banned in the first phase and uh, sometimes uh, look to be picked up. But in this case, he is here and he Ten is seconds. in phase two. So it's going to be a great pickup, a value pick, I would say, in the sense that he's going to be able to Empire. really stick Turn to that bane, to prevent the Fiend's Grip from going on too long. Uh, obviously, he has a lot of potential with uh, his physical damage output, his physical damage amplification, and uh, they could go for a Templar Assassin here, and that would not be bad at all. Like, I don't see any reason not to go TA, but Wind Ranger is a similar Dia hero team. as in terms of benefit. She's a little bit easier yeah. to nuke down um, than the TA with Refraction, but at the same time, you get that added value of an amazing disable through Shackle Shot. Yeah, and also the synergy with Slaughter. Maybe not the minus armor synergy, but certainly the damage output. And you can still do a really early Roshan with the lineup. So, gonna be nice. Arcade Power Rangers, I guess they're Arcade Esports now. No longer Arcade yeah, Power Rangers. Yeah, the Power Ranger tag kind of drifted away. I think they were transitioning so, so they could at least let people know who they were. Five rather than like Team OG who just suddenly dropped their previous name yeah. and are suddenly this team and everybody's confused. But, uh, I mean, I, I'm glad for the transition, but now the Power Rangers are no more. Yeah, so um, that makes me sad. I always like that name. But either way, Arcade, I wouldn't be... I feel like they need a really nice carry here. The problem is you're dealing with Slaughter or Windrunner, so you can't be too greedy. Even though you have really protective supports, I feel like Lich Bane will generally keep you alive in-game, in lane. But I feel like if you try to go for something greedy like the Spectre, Windrunner's going to get her blink, Slaughter's going to get her, his blink, and then you're dead all over the map. But... You've got some defensive supports, and I wouldn't be surprised to see a strong tri lane here. Could also run 2 1 2. That's so popular right now, though, with the Lich with the Tusk. Mm -hmm. Which is like a disgusting gyro gets no form lane. I don't know. Lots of options. A Razor? 
Take he's a good hero. I just yeah. don't. He's not the most exciting. <laughs> yeah, but it's a pretty interesting when you get the Nightmare involved. You get a Nightmare a target, you static link them, and this guy is suddenly doubling his damage output. So I think there's some real kill generation possibilities when the Bane gets involved, and to the point that we might actually Ten see like a solo minutes. safe laner here. We could see like a duo mid of Bane Razor, a Five duo off lane of Lich minutes. Tusk, and then the safe laner is pretty much anybody that can uh, 1v1 a Slardar, to be honest, and uh, that could be... Uh, changing the the meta a little bit as far as what we've been seeing traditionally throughout the the past couple of weeks. Yeah, and I wonder for Team Empire, they obviously want another strong support. They've got themselves the Dazzle. The Wyvern is still not banned or picked for either team. So if I were Power Rangers, I might be looking. Uh, sorry, if I were Arcade Esports, I might be looking to get rid of that one. Although, yeah, actually, I would hate to play up against the Wyvern. And yeah, they get rid of a nice strong. Yeah. Support, uh, carry like slog. I, I feel I'm like just... Dazzle Wyvern is a little difficult to work together, though. They're so item independent. You can farm a blink on Wyvern, but he's still great without it. And it's just like, while item independence isn't a bad thing, you want to really make the most of the fact that in most games, a one of the two supports actually gets quite a bit of farm. So, Disruptor is a, definitely a more impactful counter in my mind uh, to what we're looking at here. Um, because still go for nice. anything that goes for a four staff, though, against the Chain Frost. Yeah, also nice, the Disruptor against a Tusk. You don't want to be Tusking Ten into a Disruptor. Never fun. So Empire, probably just wanting a strong support. Could they go for something like the Spirit Breaker here, or is that a bit too greedy crazy? It's not bad, but I still feel like Arcade has the tools to counter. They're actually yeah. going to go for the Bounty Hunter, Diety. though. And, uh... Oh my, three. Three today? Maybe we'll get another Rapier game? Just saying. <laughs> Ember isn't banned out? It's a possibility. Why not? Why actually, not? it actually is not banned out, and... Really strange. Some teams really. I mean, when I when I cast any Dota, it's banned or picked really early on. But instead, they go with the Lushrac, and I like this. Clearly, someone who does a lot of magic output gonna force Gyro into a BKB early, and even Windrunner. Windrunner, she can get away from it, but if she's stuck in place at all, she's taking a lot of damage. Yeah, I like Ember in a few key matchups, but all around, I don't think it's like a must pick for either mm -hmm. team. And the fact that there's a Slaughter in the game and a Wind Ranger that you're going up against, no, you don't want the Ember Spirit against those kinds of heroes. So. Uh, I think that it's uh, smart to go for something else that will work out in a more independent lane. Again, they have the nightmare setup. Bane can go to one of two lanes and absolutely dominate just through one spell alone. Setting up Split Earths, setting up Static Links makes it very, very difficult for Empire to really get their groove on when they're under fire uh, wherever the Bane happens to roam. And that means with Bane and Lich having flexibility in their lanes as well as high impact just through the sacrifice and just through the nightmare, I feel Five like Team Empire minutes. are actually going to be struggling to break into the mid game, where of course the Bounty Hunter, the Gyro, Slardar, th those heroes prevail. Yeah, and it's oh. Prepare for battle. Wait a second. They swapped around. Now Tron is on the Lashrak, so just a little bit of a change up there. So it looks like they're sending Flow up top. Oh, oh, two minutes. It's excellent. Um, how do you? I think Safe Lane Slaughter is never bad it'll certainly give him a better matchup here it feels like and if he can get that early blink dagger it's great but this does mean that they're running an Actually, i'm, I'm kind of confused oh, oh no no sure. no no oops chester cats on the tusk i'm not sure one second i have to double check pr's lineup for who plays what because right. well, tron... just... yeah we're gonna see razor mid he's getting tangos pulled to him tron has a soul ring recipe so he's gonna be going to the safe lane and that would leave chester cat the, yeah. the off laner to go bottom. I'm an idiot. I got mixed up with the slaughter because he was out so early. For a second, I thought they were running like a safe lane slaughter, and I was like, that's interesting. But yeah, I got mixed up with the teams because I'm really smart. And yeah, Tron normally plays their carry. He used to on other teams, so I was going to be a bit surprised to see him on something else. That's why I was a bit like, wait, what? But going to be nice matchups. I have no idea what we're saying. I'm assuming everything is perfectly fine in the chat. <laughs> Absolutely. Just yeah, so. uh, friendly chat, friendly banter. And uh, wishing each other good luck and uh, some shout outs. Yeah. So I am hoping that we see Cheshire Cat played like the Tusk earlier today that rotated super early, um, Sexy Bamboo's Tusk. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping to see the kind of you hit a good enough level that you understand you can get some ganks. Because otherwise, his lane, I mean, yes, you can snowball dodge a lot of the gyrocopter's output, but you're generally snowballing into your enemies unless you happen to manage to be in a situation where the creep wave's pulsing you by. So always scary for a Tusk in that matchup. Absolutely. 
So looking over the Empire side, of course they've got Flo on the Slardar there. Uh, he does go for the TP ward. I think he's got in pretty much the perfect spot there. There's a flower right underneath that ward that'll indicate uh, that it's the exact right spot, and yeah, he got it. So that's the hardest one to deward. Um, if you have to be essentially pixel perfect on your essential ward placement if you're going to be able to take that out with one. And more, much more often, you're going to see teams have to put two, commit two centuries to take care of that one, unless yeah. they uh, guess. And uh, then, of course, you got Bounty Hunter, who's going to have two centuries of his own. Tango's to kill those off quickly, and he's probably going to make top lane a little bit difficult for the Leshrac. Yeah, this one isn't one that we see as often, right? It's probably less likely to be dewatered just because it's actually hiding behind the trees, but it only gives you vision of the rune and not any of this fine area, which is, of course, where you want to see that to know if there's a gank coming from the side. At the same time, it's like you wouldn't see the bounty hunter anyway, and a dazzle is he just has a slow. So sure. maybe you'll be okay. And it does block the the spawn, right? I believe yeah, I, I I, there's either so. one here, just to the left of it, or that one that actually blocks the spawn. And knowing how hard it is for me to stack that camp to the east, I'm pretty sure that is the line. So, uh, yeah, I think that is going to be a nice little blocker there. And uh, that will be much more frustrating. I am I mean, there's not much to say about that one. They prep with the sentry ward. He walks right into him. Nightmare into kill. Goodbye, Aloha Dance, on that Weapon Y. I wonder if he actually wants us to say Weapon Y. I am not. Nah, I, I will not do that. <laughs> You're Aloha like, no, Dance, it's not happening. probably it's forever shall be. Aloha Dance is a great name. Um, I don't know what he means by it, uh, but I assume begins. he's a happy guy from the name. So, unlike Misery's name, where you're just like, wow, man, what happened? What happened when you were picking names? But either way, we've got the nice little deny in mid by Lich. Pretty standard play there. And Razor probably going to have a bit of advantage mid, at least until Windrunner gets a few levels. She can certainly always Windrun out of Static Link, but it's a bit of a pain to deal with either way. So, J4 is going to start here on the top lane. 580 HP, 4 armor making sure that he stops the, the creep that was let through so that they can keep their creep equilibrium under control even if they don't unlock this pull camp and that'll make it a little bit more difficult to slaughter, for Slaughter to get involved. In fact, like approaching the lane in general is probably pretty scary for him. Um, interesting position for Aloha Dance though, although he did end up feeding First Blood, he's very intentional about this courier snipe and he's even going to be dropping an Observer Ward in the enemy base uh, in order to accomplish that. So they don't see that. I don't think they... S yeah, he was in the perfect fog okay. position. He's practiced this for sure. And so he's just going to be waiting for that to come out. In the meantime, stalking the jungle. It's going to be a long wait, though. Um, Varish started with a lot of regen and so on, so he's not exactly getting a false bottle. And we've even got Lich. Not oh, looks like Lich is probably just heading down bottom. No, kind of also keeping an eye out for it. So um, pretty surprising. Yeah, I think Barash actually got an extra healing salve because of the first blood. I'm not 100% <laughs> sure on that, but if that's the case, and that's a, a reason for the bounty hunter to be missing out on a lot of experience elsewhere, so that's quite unfortunate. He's picked up on this a bit, he's kind of poking around, he's like, look, I, I want this, why isn't it coming? At top, as you talked about, Slaughter having a hard time getting near the creep wave at all, and Tusk is having a lot better time, but now that the Dazzle's there, bring in some harass. Yeah. I mean, the Courier Snipe is really valuable, but it's probably yeah. not worth several minutes of your time, and right now he's probably spent a good minute and a half, and an Observer were committed to this, so in the end he's just gonna... Slip away, see what he can do up top, and if he sees the courier coming out on the OBS ward, he'll try to rush out as quick as can be. Yeah, it's really rough to say the value, especially with the changes to Bounty Hunter's track. We talked about it, the last two Bounty Hunter games, but it feels like he can't just play around getting a little bit done on the map and then hitting six. You have to get more done, just because your track isn't as valuable. So, I don't know whether he's trying to... Oh, okay. It's, it's happening. Yes, it is, but he doesn't see it just we yet. Have... You should have enough damage. It's oh, not in wait, the it goes it's back. not in ward vision right yet. It's not. It's still moving around. Still slipping. Oh, it wants shoes. Oh, getting the boots. But Lich looks like he's gonna just yeah. man deliver it and make sure the because mm -hmm. they know Bounty Hunter has been missing this whole time, and Bounty Hunter does not go missing for three minutes for no reason. So he's gonna actually manually deliver everything. No, and... wait. He he got his own boots. Uh oh. And then they saw the Bounty Hunter, I think, in the vision. So he's also gonna deliver the bottle. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Whiff. Uh, we're going to see up top here, Slaughter, eat the damage from that Ooh. Split Earth. And then he's just going to be lightning and right-click down. Healing Salve, not enough to actually bring him back up. So a nice little combo there. Yeah, really nice job there, catching him out again. It is a harder thing, I think, for Slaughter Three to offlane just because he doesn't have an easy tool like the Ice Shards that Cheshire Cat has, which can cut somebody off. And Cheshire Cat also now does have a ward in bottom, so no sneaking up on him. I think Arcade doing a really good job here. They're 
kind of winning most of their lanes. The mid matchup, yeah, they're winning that one too. So while Tusk is maybe having a bit of trouble down bottom, he's already level three. He's going to hit level four probably with this creep wave. Going into the mid game. Okay, going to be in an advantage unless something magical happens for Empire. Yeah, I, significantly. I mean, this bounty hunter pick has not worked out in any capacity. Usually you don't talk about how a pick has failed three minutes into the game, but he's literally seen 100 experience. He's picked up bounty rune and then he's seen 50. So... <laughs> It's just he's been able, unable to accomplish what he wants. He actually used one of his team's Observer Wards to fail to accomplish what he, he was looking for. And uh, yeah, he just hasn't been involved in, in any real capacity. So that's just something that with the new track, you really can't afford to do. It's, you have to Ooh, get level Silent's 6 Oh, Silent's going to go down. Uh, okay. He, so basically what happened there is there was a big creep wave. Silent was trying to be like, oh, I can trade hits with you, Cheshire Cat. And then, of course, Cheshire Cat did the classic Tusk. I'm going to ice shards you in my entire creep wave. And Silent just can't stand up to that. So bottom lane is officially a win for Cheshire Cat. And unless this Bounty Hunter, that's another issue. When you're losing all your lanes, Bounty Hunter, having a hero who leeches in one of them, not very nice. It doesn't help your team. Yeah, it's just, yeah, not, he's not creating any value, and he's uh, just kind of, in that sense, detracting from it just by taking the hero pick up. Even the, this bottle crow coming through is not going to be countered. It's not scouted by that ward that was placed. As clever as that idea is, it's actually always moving in the northern half of the base, so he's actually not even seeing the courier movement, and can't even counter the, the bottle. So, yeah. at this point, he's just going to sit near the jungle, keep an eye on things that are going on over there, but really, otherwise accomplishing nothing, as he still doesn't even have Janata. Now, he did stop a stack by the Lich. Something else to mention, another problem with Bounty Hunter this game, is he's not like the Lich. He might actually try to go for the Courier on its way home after going yeah. to bottom. So, I that. don't know if he has enough damage without Jonata. Like, you have this <laughs> bonus damage because you're melee. Oh, and they fly the Courier over to mid. Poor Bounty Hunter. Um, that really sucks. I don't know if he got a chance to see what was on it. Because I think if he saw what was on it, he'd know it'd be coming back from mid. But he's still uh, expecting it. I, I, just, I would feel bad if I had to, if anybody had to go back and player perspective him on the replay, oh. just him sitting around and, and hoping he plays couriers. another one. Okay, he, he knows, he knows. I don't think he has the damage uh, though. Here he goes, one hit. Oh, uh, doesn't have the damage. No, not even close. You'd have to double shadow walk hit it and then it'd be like either at one HP or dead. It's very close. That's, uh, that sucks. Yeah, and as you said, it's not easy for a bounty hunter. I mean, he's not like the Lich. The Lich here can stack and then the Razor takes the camps and you leech experience. The bounty hunter, I guess, could have been stacking and maybe sapping some experience, but Gyrocopter's greedy. Uh, I guess the bounty hunter can fall back on that. But yeah, he's probably not going to be level six until 12 minutes into this game, unless he's involved magically in some big team fights. So already this game looking super hard for Empire. Yeah, I mean, I wish I could talk about more, but literally this game has been Bounty Hunter versus Courier, and so far the Courier has been winning. Uh, that's round three there, and still, he prevails. Um, at this point, the Bounty Hunter really just has to sit next to a team fight that happens, contributing almost nothing to it, and get experience that way. I, I really can't oh. see much else. Okay, what can you do here, though, right? Maybe you go, you leech something on the gyrocopter, you hope that Tusk makes a mistake, or do you try to make something happen up top, maybe both you and the Dazzle? Although Dazzle, not the best of ganking heroes. Like, uh, there has to be a good way to salvage this, I feel. And we, you, they just have to figure it out. Maybe it's smoke rotations, as you said. Maybe it's just committing five oh, men that's to make bad. kill two. Oh, that's so bad. Silent just TP'd up to do this surprise that you're, you're trying to like set up oh. a thing where it's like, okay, well, let's do this and this and this. Well, the, whether they want to do a surprise, we rotate a face with Gyrocopter to get a kill with Call Down. Call Down Crush, suddenly you get killed, suddenly Bounty Hunter's level four. But he puts them the Sentry Ward, and although the Observer Ward is in the radius, it's not in line of sight. So the Gyrocopter's rotation is completely... Scout it out, and Arcade are going to be perfectly fine under tower. In fact, Aloha Dance caught inside the Nightmare, and his friends are nowhere to be found. It's going to be another death of the Bounty Hunter. Yeah, this is really, really rough. Um, I think now what you do just to salvage this, you just stack. You stack yeah, up absolutely. everything you can. You say, look, I'm banking it all on the gyro. I'm going to be level like six at 15 minutes in maybe if we're lucky. So I'm just going to stack the crap out of the jungle. You are now just a dedicated stacker. Stack the ancients, stack the jungle, stack whatever you can find. Um, and that's kind of your only hope. They're actually looking for enemy stacks and not going to find anything. This rotation, they might be able to catch out Cheshire Cat here. If he, oh, he's actually gonna walk right into them. They got the cooldown. They had the slithering crush, and he can't dodge that. So oh, he's, I mean, he's going into death. So. Hey, oh, oh, if he haste. got that, uh, like really fast fingers, haste, magic stick, magic, 
and then using the bottle and survive that last auto attack, that would just be devastating for Empire. They're gonna wander in here towards mid, but Barash doesn't go back the normal way. He goes, keeps his distance from Silent, and uh, now you've rotated your gyrocopter. He's gotten exactly one kill, and he's gotten minimal CS in the process. Yeah, I. On the on the other hand, right? They they got. They've got stacks that Gyro's about to do in like 15 seconds, and uh, where is Bounty Hunter? Yeah, he's Bounty across Hunter. the entire map. He is absolutely nowhere near. He has no TP. There's no way he's getting that experience. So at some point, you just gotta like deny yourself the neutrals just to get to a place where you can start building up your level pool. The other awkward thing about this is he's placed these. Is two he seriously super trying to snipe the courier still? <laughs> I think he's got yeah, like he, broken. He, he's got Janata now. He's, he's got, got a vendetta he against this this Janata. freaking Cory, and it's perfectly fine. They're moving it per expertly. And this guy, he I think he's going to do this for the rest of the game. Like, I think he really just is so pissed that he hasn't gotten it, that at some point he just he can't think of anything else. Drawing lines on the map of his trajectory, and uh, he might get an opportunity here, but I think he's going to walk right by it. Yeah, look, there's a ping, and there's a razor who's just going to collect under the tier 2. Yeah, this is rough as, but looking around, let's see how the rest of the lanes are going, because we have had some things more equalized. Now, Windrunner, she's definitely not had the easiest of time mid. You expect that against a Razor, but not all is lost. She's not super far behind. And this Gyrocopter, after taking a few stacks, he's back on par with the Leshrac and the Razor. So he, as an early... Oh, Russian under Sentry Ward, goal. another death of the Bounty Hunter. Just Walrus Punch in the air. Silent looking for the return kill. Ice Armor, actually, not going to be enough, Black thanks cannon. to the Flat Cannon targeting an alternative target. So, now we have Bane. Going to set up the Static Link, but it is going to be a broken, thanks to Dazzle's assistance. But still no fear, doesn't really have much durability, doesn't have a TP scroll. So the Grave is not going to be saving his life. It will just merely delay the death. Shadow Wave, going to be doing a nice little heal bomb, but... No, only one instance of damage connecting and Barash will walk away healthy. Still, they saved... Yeah, they lost Bounty Hunter. Yes, they lost Dazzle. They saved um, the Gyrocopter, who got himself another kill and is going to keep working towards that. I think this is a perfect game for him doing what we saw last game. Maybe Assange and then maybe straight BKB. And in mid, Windrunner, she's working on the tower. Isn't worried at all about physical damage. She needs to leave. Ice shards hit. Stat hits. She's dead. She's going to take a couple more auto attacks. Tries to go for the Shackle. It actually latches, but isn't enough right here, so... Not the best. Either way, I still think this game, Empire's a bit in the hole. It's not over, right? They're very far behind on experience, but a lot of that being, of course, Radiant Lich and Bounty Hunter. Tower. And now Somewhere Bounty Hunter's top. Chillaxon in bottom. He's level 3, which is fantastic for him. Comeback is always real, but it is looking pretty nasty Radiant right now. 5,000 experience at 11 minutes. I actually haven't seen that big of an experience deficit in a long time. Just the, the levels on the Slardar and the Bounty Hunter together are just really weak and it's because they if they go anywhere involved then they die yeah it's not uncommon to see this against a lich lineup oh, oh a deficit not nearly that big as you mentioned but also the bounty hunter of course getting nothing really harming their team lineup so bit unfortunate uh we do have more stacks coming out for empire though and the radiant they're clearing sorry and arcade they're clearing theirs now barrage actually pops eye of the storm to do this so Maybe they can make something happen knowing that's down, but well, well, they do know it's down because they have this ward. That I, that's the other thing I was going to comment on. The other problem I think with Bounty Hunter doing what he's been doing, these really deep wards aren't great at their state in the game. Yes, you can argue this one sees the stacks and so on, but I don't think they're in a great position to go attack. Yeah, if you were against like an alchemist or something like that, I'd say actually that ward still just is valuable in of itself. But the fact is, you've got your level 3 Bounty Hunter against this level 6 Bane. Uh, you've used wards very deep, you've caught nothing, and there you go, Aloha Dance goes again. I, he was, I, if you watch the minimap, this game is actually hilarious. Every time the, the quarry would like walk past a ward, oh, resolution in trouble, gets comboed up, good nukes and the DD. But um, every time the, the quarry would just walk past the wards that he's placed, he pings it, like, longingly. Yeah. He's so sad. Happens to the best of us, you know. Dota, sometimes you get slightly fixated. Now, Silent has gone Yasha first. Probably going to work on that Sanj Radiant's next. And it is something where the Gyrocopter attack. here, who's very ready to fight very early on. So perhaps Empire can salvage this with a big team fight. We saw what cooldown did earlier. It, mm -hmm. I mean, it's not the best of ultimates, but it's you know fits with the rest of what Gyro has. And maybe they can make something happen. Bane also placing a super deep ward. And I don't think Empire has any idea about this one. Nope, and it actually just got out the Bounty Hunter and Viz, so they try to dust oh. him, blindly, barely missing. They thought he'd be under tower, which makes sense, but he actually ran up here and then doubled back. 
so uh, that actually saves his life, but it's just... They're going to go ahead, edict the tower down. There's going to be a call down trying to turn this back around. There's going to be a beautiful chain frost, though, and only a few creeps to tank it up. Immediate fiend's grip cancel as the target dies. Slardar falls, and Silent will be barely alive for a moment, and it looks like he will stay alive. Oh, no, Barrage coming in from the side, getting the plasma field, and making it a four for one, as well as a tower. I thought that was going to go so well for them, being five against three, but as you said, that Lich ultimate, it got mad bounces, and they didn't separate for it. I think they thought the Shallow Grave would be enough, but it kept bouncing. And again, this and is a Observer Ward. Like, they not only saw Bounty Hunter with it, they, this, this, the kind of ward that you place right here, as well as right here, is going to give you perfect intel uh, into the Radiant side defending their Tier 1 top. That happens a lot, and in this case, it's just at the perfect time where they're able to respond with everything and to dominate. Yeah, this hasn't exactly been like the other games we saw today. Um, I don't... I don't want to say it's over or anything, but it's going really poorly for Empire. I think we've hopped on that enough to get back into it. Is it just smokes? Is it just hoping and praying that Slaughter gets a Blink Dagger from nowhere? I think the Blink Dagger is a huge aspect of this. Oh, um, we got a Snowball in on to Flow Walrus Punch as well. Will he be able to... Nope. That's split off in his face. So not able to get out there and another kill going the way. They're going to... They get a Shackle here onto Barrage, but... Bounty oh, Hunter's heroes, not doing heroes. damage. And oh, he doesn't I even have Invis. Oh, it's ticking down. But either way, the Brain Sap oh. will finish it off. Like, so as much as I wanted to op talk, op talk optimistically about what they can do, I honestly think they're going to call GG in like 60 seconds. So it's uh, it's difficult. They they played. We saw some really great games go the distance and uh, some teams that didn't seem like they had that much of a shot stick it out for a very long time. But Empire need nearly a miracle to bring themselves back into this one. Yeah, it does feel like the Bounty Hunter strat, it was kind of all in on the Courier and it not going their way, they just didn't have a way to transfer him to making a lot happen. Now, the rubber band effect is real and with track, you can amplify that. Of course, Bounty Hunter needs another level and a half to get there, so Leeching Maid no longer safe. Oh, nice shackle, but Big Num doesn't really care, so yeah. he's gonna just wander away. Tranqu he doesn't even lose his Tranquil Boots. Like, they stay yeah. on, he's gonna be full HP and he's delivering out a mechanism right now. Just the yeah. recipe is all he needs. We've got also really good ward vision coming out of Arcade uh, because, I mean, it's the common thing that happens. You're ahead, your supports are able to afford sentries and so on, and they've been getting a really good job or doing a really good job of de-warding Empire at every turn. So, also a bit rough. For the lineup of Empire, though, I think the Bounty Hunter eventually will be wanting a mechanism. Windrunner, she's not super close yet, but she can eventually work on a uh, Aghanims. Yeah, she just picked up the point booster. So... They're getting there. Um, if Flo can find space for, I think he needs like another four waves to get the blink, I think they can maybe start making some single pickoffs happen. Because they have single target damage right now. Like they could definitely Radiant's kill one isolated tower. person definitely. on Empire. So I'm trying to I'm trying to be the positive. You can you can be negative. I'll try to like. <laughs> <laughs> well, we see Arcade pretty well ready for a fight here. Bane's gonna be coming from the side. It might be a quick cancel of his ultimate though. The short toss comes out, so yeah, J4 doesn't really get the opportunity. He does finally drop it, but there's gonna be the bounty hunter canceling out the channel. No fear goes for the grave TP. They do cancel it, but with a chain frost, which is a pretty heavy cooldown. There's gonna be a shackle to a tree. Cheshire can't gonna take a lot of damage from the call down. And the mechanism is not available yet, so they might be able to get this one kill. The Nightmare will cancel uh, Slaughter's aggression. And now, actually, they still keep Cheshire Cat alive with 10 HP. He's going to bottle up a little bit. They have vision on him, but... Oh, snowballing Snowball forward. This is dangerous. One crush, but no, the Walrus Punch comes first. Cheshire Cat dropping him down. And another Nightmare setting up a potential follow-up kill. Split Earth and the Static Link is going to be... Just giving the Bane an unstoppable streak here at 17 and a half minutes. And they're just so frustrated at this point. I'm I'm not just worried about how they get into this game. I'm worried how they get back into this best of three. What is what if what just happened in game one have the ramifications of for game two? Like how do you actually shake this off and go into game two on, with a clear mind? I am not sure, and the part that I think is super funny is this Empire, this team that we're seeing right now, I don't know if they had, did they have a different, no, they used this exact lineup, they just beat OG, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I like, Am I, like, on crazy, no, so what probably happened is those games are so intense, they're tired, right? Because they just played a big set, it was really hard, and they're probably having a rough day, so let's just put it at that. Um, I think what actually is going to happen, it's clear 
to me by the fact that they're not GGing out, they might be frustrated, but they're probably in still good mental states. And you can see by Silence movements, even though his team is having a rough time, even though he's having a rough time, he's not where he wants to be at this point in the game, but he is diligently going back to farming when he can. So I think they're going to be fine mentally. As you said, though, it is really rough, and they're going to have to somehow bring it back this game and somehow bring it back for the next. Now, Bounty Hunter, he is almost level 6, and I'm excited for Big Toner. Oh, but Jesus, they find him, though. No, run, little Bounty Hunter. Do they have a gem? Who, who? Uh, they probably will oh, no. soon. They don't already okay. yet, but I'm, I would not be surprised to see a gem of Drusite come out and just crush the spirits of this, this Bounty Hunter. He is going to find level 6 with this creep wave, so he may be able to get some Draco flowing towards nope. him now, but... Power shot, flat cannon, rocket barrage, cooldown, all good things for defending high ground. What is happening up top? Oh, we got a very dead flow. Can he wander away? Run, flow! He's got the sprint, and now he's got some backup. There's a heal, there's a shallow grave. He's gonna manage to get off that amp damage. No slithering crush coming out, and that'll be the end of that, I think. So at least flow survives there, and this puts him one step closer to his uh, blink. You know, he he's only 500 gold away. We're, we're getting there for Empire, so... It is rough though, when, as you talked about the kill skills before, we got a uh, Bane who's 6 and 0, a Razor who's 5 and 0, a Lich who's 3 and 0, and I'm not even mentioning assists because those are all high numbers, so mm -hmm. driver's seat firmly <laughs> for yeah. Arcade uh, in this game. And that's, I think that's another big difference uh, between the match uh, between OG and this one. Uh, they went 2 and 1 against OG. The, their first win was a 28 minute win and their second one featured a night stalker a spirit breaker and a viper all about momentum i feel like uh empire couldn't get out of the driveway like they really just got shut down immediately and there's no yeah. momentum when you're you're standing still very true and uh we may i don't think we'll get it but we may be approaching the 322 score on the top <laughs> Um, always a fun thing to see, but no, I think Empire, I really have to say I like this. A lot of teams, as you mentioned, would have GG'd out at this point. You know when you're a team of this caliber, the other day I was costing a DC game, and now he just calls it. He's like, oh, we're 25,000 gold in the hole. Like, he knew exactly how far behind they were. And I'm sure Empire, as an experienced team who watches their replays, they know they're far behind, but clearly Silent either thinks that they can give it a go, or they're feeling mentally prepared, and we've got an engagement. Are they gonna get? Oh no, that's just a very dead flow going down. Taking a while, though, was he... Chucks. That put him further away from his blink dagger. He was very close to it right there, and he lost quite a bit of gold. So. True. And now they got the wards all over. Dire mm -hmm. have just taken control of the Radiant Jungle. Um, in fact, it's safer to farm the Dire Jungle, as Silent is, is demonstrating for us. It's, this is actually the safest place for him to be, uh, despite what you would think. He'll just go ahead and clear out one full creep wave, and uh, that will be enough. Keeping away. Yeah. So, um, I also think... it. Another thing to mention about this game, and perhaps why Empire is having a rough time, I would imagine that Arcade and Empire, just both being from the CIS region, are very frequent scrim partners. So it could be that Arcade just kind of were expecting this type of thing. Um, and Empire couldn't really get the Radiant's plays that they wanted. But we have a wraparound, and Windrunner, she's trying to run away, but she might be taking a snowball to the face. Can Cheshire Cat get anything done here? He sees her. It's nighttime, though. It's really hard to get these ganks off the ice shot. Gonna Radiant's land it in a perfect tower. spot for resolution. And the TP out. Is she really gonna manage no. this? No, the nightmare is support rotating in. Silence coming, but nobody else will be there. And I think resolution, oh, the static link's gonna be a world for hurt, and that walrus punch. She has popped up a mech or something. Here comes. Oh, that is a split earth, and. That is all hope gone for resolution. At the same time, Silent still farming up a storm has a full BKB. Despite, like, given everything that his team is going through, Silent's farm is impressive. Aloha Dance. Could he get it? It's hasting out. It's gonna be haste on cooldown. Aloha Dance versus the Flying Courier going underneath the tier two. He wants his vengeance closing in the Janata. Oh no. no! In the mid lane, there's a tier two being pushed in, but. I want to see Aloha Dance kill this courier. If there's Radiant one thing that could raise their spirits, it's him waiting here for Curry to come back and him to punch it right oh in no. his little donkey face. Here comes Lich. He's he's gonna go for it. He gets one. Oh. He can he get two. Yeah. <laughs> We've done it. We've done it. Empire of one in our hearts, right? That's like just call GG now, Arcade. Yeah, yeah. They've done it. Okay. Also, this Lich is so rich, he's going Atos first item. Atos is not a bad item in this game because it slows down people. There's a lot of people here who kind of just try to run away from you, and Razor, as a hero, wants to be able to catch up to them and, of course, do damage output. Same as Lashrak. Kind of weird, though, against a Sprinter and the Windrunner with Windrun. Or do you like the Atos? The big Atos fan? Uh, I, I, 
like Ato situationally, but I don't feel it fits Wind Ranger very particularly. There are a few heroes like um I I really like it if a Lich is doing really well in a game to go for Atos. Um, yeah, which is what he's doing. Yeah, and so like you get the chain frost, you follow up the Atos, and it makes it much more difficult to get away. Uh, even if you're sprinting, like it's just it's it's much more likely you'll get extra bounces just using that precisely on the target that's trying to leave the pack. And then it'll, like, essentially, what often happens with Chain Frost is, like, let's say there's four people under its fire, uh, three of them will go one way, the one that it's chasing will go the other, and it'll break. But if you slow that one down and it goes back to the pack of three, suddenly you're doing a lot of damage. So it's just those, those small timing periods where you can get that extra slow, get that extra bounce. Now we have a smoke into an Aegis, but they're, oh, they should be able to see that he just used this. They have the ward vision. They should be able to get a slithering crush. Easy shackle as well. And I have the storm, thankfully, hitting on creeps. They got themselves they a huge that. kill. Oh, but he comes the Lich ulti. And now Tr Tron, he's coming in. He has got a lot of damage. He misses the split earth. They've got the cooldown. Nobody's going to get hit. Tron actually gets hit by a little bit. Another slithering crush. Are they turning this around? Empire have burned the Aegis. Can they get a secondary kill? I think they need to leave. No fear. Healing them up. And shackle, it doesn't latch. But now here comes the wall. Warus, man, he's gonna be in there. Warus punch up. He actually doesn't manage to kill off Silent. There's a shallow grave. He's outputting a lot of damage. I think he's dead anyway, but they kept him alive for quite a while. And I have to say, even though they're gonna lose three, still a win for Empire. Win for Empire, but a loss for the chat. Because we thread the needle with uh, 4 to 21, and yeah. uh, we didn't get either dream. We didn't, we missed, we missed both of the dreams, you're right. But when we look at this net worth graph, actually coming out on top, even though only one hero gave them a bounty since the other had an Aegis. Um, well done, Empire. You have used the rubber band effect. You're only 15,000 net worth in the hole. I believe we're going to see a comeback. Calling it now. Eating right. words in like five minutes when the base is gone, but calling it now. <laughs> Ambitious sentiment. I mean, we do have a mechanism on Bounty Hunter. Uh, I... I wouldn't believe it if I wasn't seeing it from my own two eyes, but there is a mechanism complete here, and uh, that is a key to sticking around in the fights and, and having a shot at this one. If they keep breaking uh, Chain Frost well effectively enough, luckily it didn't bounce to the Ancients, where it would just keep on bouncing to whoever is nearby. But um, yeah, if they if they are able to spread out a little bit, get some really good call down, Silent is rapidly approaching level 16, and uh, they still have some good team fight on their hands. Yep. Lich, I think, just finished his rod of eight. I swear he had another. He does. Uh, uh, staff? Is it on the courier or something? It, there's one on the courier, yeah. Okay, I swear he had one on him. Maybe he just moved stuff around for wards or something. Oh, or I'm crazy. I saw, thought Lich. I thought he had two components. Um, so happens though. Sometimes. We see things and we're crazy. Now, Aegis has quite a while on it still, which is really good for Empire. I don't think they could live here if there was an Aegis siege coming up their high ground. But looks like Arcade getting ready for a normal siege, and they certainly have the damage output with lots of this these points in Diabolic Edict. Indeed. So they're going to be looking to push through, but obviously uh, this Aegis is going to be uh, uninvolved for now. So they might think about can just holding off the next row cycle. Oh boy. Um, Mech or not, the bounty hunter goes down. Gem of True Sight uh, is a pretty easy means to pick them off. And yeah, it's getting ugly from here. I mean, bounty hunter isn't the biggest aspect of the ability to counter push, but it is a big aspect of getting any comeback out of a high ground defense. You get like three or four tracks before the fight begins, and if you can even break even, you can get a huge amount of comeback gold. But they're going outside the base. They're going right onto Cheshire, uh, the Tusk. They'll dust him to try to catch him, but he's still so tanky, and it goes right in the snowball. They'll fiend scrip on the Gyrocopter, wasting that BKB, and bounce the Chain Frost back to the Creep Wave. We're going to see Gyrocopter go for the TP away, and it will succeed. Wasting out a lot nightmare. of cooldowns, but the Wind Ranger getting caught out by the Yule's combo, and that is going to be one dead Lirali. Good game, yeah. well played, and Arcade taking it 27 minutes, 45 seconds. They had no buybacks there, they couldn't hold anymore. Um, poor Aloha Dance, but we'll be going into a game two, and hopefully it won't be as one-sided. Yeah, I, I think it's all about how it starts off, especially when Bounty Hunter's on the table, but just in general. I feel like Aloha Dance, well, he probably had a lot of time on his hands to uh, dictate his team's movements, which is really good if you're trying to shot call or captain. Uh, he had a lot of time on his hands that way, but that's that's not the time you want that. It's the laning phase where everybody knows what they're doing already. You really can't 
you know, call an audible swap and, and really make anything special happen, other than like we saw Silent move up top, which unfortunately didn't contribute too much. So all in all, Empire not really showing up to play for game number one. Uh, I assume it's a momentum thing. It's really just not how they wanted the game to start, especially for a lot of dances Bounty Hunter, and they'll probably look for an alternative play style when it comes to their game two uh, against Arcade. So Arcade obviously playing some really good overall Dota, obviously using their spells very effectively for the early fights, the pickoffs they push, but in the end, it wasn't the hardest game for them. Uh, just really good Cory Micro. Whoever was calling the Cory or shots probably deserves the MVP just for that. Just keeping it alive yeah. as long as possible uh, was great, very, very effective. But, yep, game two going to be coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Thanks once again for tuning in here to Star Ladder I League Europe. I'm myself and Blaze broadcasting on behalf of Beyond the Summit alongside Llama Down Under, and we'll see you guys in game two of the Best of Three series. <laughs>